Hello everyone, my name is the Superior Sandbox, and I'm going to show you the best settings for your RiftCat program. Let's get right into it. Ah, uh, sorry. Okay, so the first thing you want to do, of course, is go to your computer and open up RiftCat 2.0 here. And give that a second to load up, and while you are doing that, go over to your phone and launch the V-Ridge app. V-Ridge is up on my phone here and with cat is loading on my computer okay so is this your phone Click yes if it is and then here we are we are in Rivcat 2.0 so go down to configuration uh, in the left hand side and first there's integrations uh, this is integrations with other apps uh, this will tell you a little bit about it here moonlight uh, most likely you won't have to deal with that uh, I guess if you have a video card and a video video card that supports it then you can use this if you want but I'm not going to mess with that in this video so in the bottom this is what you really want to do click vridge settings with the little gear what you will see when you first load up this window is something like this and first let's go through it presets so presets are on mine are on low for some reason I don't know why but anyways don't mess with the presets uh, just keep that how it is and then go to resolution what you want to do is set this to your phone's native resolution so what do i mean by native resolution i just mean the resolution of your phone screen uh, most phones most mid and lower phones will be 1920 by 1080 maybe even 720 but probably not it'll most likely be a full hd 1080 to 1080p display if you are using a newer higher end phone it will be 2560 by 1440, which is what my Nexus 6 is, so I'm going to pick that. Audio streaming, this is a cool feature. So it really does what it says. Say if you want to stream audio from the game, and you want the game audio to play through your phone speakers, then you can check that. That I actually find very useful. That's actually a very useful thing. Instead of needing a separate pair of headphones coming from your computer or something like that, if you're using VR, you can just have your headphones plugged into your phone while your phone is in the VR headset, and then you can get the sound that way. So if you have a good connection, good internet connection, good tethered connection, um, probably keep that on. I mean, keep it off now uh, for me, though. All right, quality. This is just a general quality setting. If you're getting lag, if you're getting lots of latency, or your video is not good, if it can't load... If it's not loading correctly you'll know if you experience it uh, the easiest thing you can do is to turn this down until the video gets smoother or you could turn it up if you want it to look better but that's not what I'm gonna do I'm going to go into the advanced video settings and show you how to get the most out of this program so frame rate uh, I recommend 60 FPS obviously for the smoothest experience lowest latency everything like that but if you are on a lower-end phone an older phone or just don't have that great of an internet connection Click 30 FPS. I'm going to keep mine on 60 though. Bitrate. Okay, so this tells you a little bit about what bitrate is. If you are if you have a good Wi-Fi connection, good 5 gigahertz connection, or you're using a wired connection to your computer, then turn it up uh, as much as you can to get the best, uh, best visual quality. I'm going to keep it at 19 megabits per second here. I find that pretty much matches my internet speed. Render scale. I've never had to mess with this before, but I suppose you can if you want easier makes it easier to read text but it does have a significant performance impact so um, if you're using higher-end devices you could probably turn it up a little bit or maybe more depending on what device you're using uh, me on my phone though if you're running at 1440p you probably won't even need this because I find text very easy to read uh, so I don't, I don't have any need to turn it up but if you want and you have a high-end device feel free to streaming options okay this is very important here so you're given a list of options here. Default is on NVEC. So this says it's for Windows 7 or higher with a NVIDIA GeForce card. So that uh, applies to my computer, of course. But looking at the top one here, Windows 10 with a NVIDIA GeForce or Windows 8.1 with AMD Radeon graphics. So while my computer does meet the NVEC specifications, I could also use Media Foundation because I have a GTX 1050 running Windows 10. So just pick whatever is the most specific to your device. Down here, Quick Sync, this is Windows 8.1 using 
uh, Intel Core 4000 series or higher. I believe that means that's for Intel integrated graphics from a 4th-gen Intel processor or above. So software, this is software streaming, software encoding. Uh, this is for Windows 8.1 Plus. It should work on almost any device configuration, but the performance will be lower. Use this only as a last resort. So, uh, HEVAC, uh, that's what I call this, HEVAC, H-E-V-C, experimental. This is if you have a Windows 10 computer with a GTX 960 or higher, and an HEVAC, or H-E-V-C, capable phone. So, let's see what this says here. This option can increase visible quality by around 40% compared to regular streaming, but it requires both powerful graphics cards and a phone. If you experience higher defecting delays or streaming stops to work completely, disable this option. Okay, so, uh, can you use HEVC? I found it very helpful. Uh, again, I have a DTX 1050, so I meet the requirements, and Windows 10. If you do, definitely uh, check that. Also, your phone. Is your phone HEVC capable? Well, you might need to look that up on Google, because there's so many different phones out there. Uh, most higher, definitely any higher end phone released in the past four years, I'm pretty comfortable saying it will be compatible. Uh, but if it's a lower end phone, even today, I don't know, you might want to look that up for sure. I looked up my Nexus 6 here, and it does support uh, HEVAC. Okay, streaming mode, it tells you what the different options are and what they mean, so let's go through them real quick. Prioritize keyframes, that's the default. This mode will prevent losing keyframes, but allow minimal artifacting and will keep the latency low. So allow frame loss. This mode will try to minimize latency by allowing packet loss, but it might drop frames and visual quality won't be as great. Last one, prevent frame loss. This mode will try to avoid any frame, avoid losing any frames, but it may add additional latency. So latency, I don't if you don't know what these words are, latency is essentially lag. It's how quickly your phone responds to you moving your head, essentially. So if you move your head to the right, where your phone move in real time, or will it lag behind a little bit? And so that lagging behind motion can give some people, some more than others, motion sickness. So for those people, you'd probably want to change it to allow frame loss if you're very susceptible to that. Prioritize keyframes, I'd say keep it default for most people. Uh, unless you're really trying to squeeze all the visual quality out of your out of your uh, game, or and you don't care about latency. Tracking options. Okay, so this could get a little complicated. Most of you just using a Riftcat headset won't need to change anything. Uh, so tracking source, phone sensors only. This uses only your phone sensors. But if you're also using FreeTrack, and you'll know what that is if you use it. If you don't know, then don't mess with it. Uh, it's a separate tracking thing, so it'll use your phone's orientation sensors, and it'll track your position with FreeTrack. So there's also the option to use FreeTrack. will track your orientation and your position. Uh, but again, unless you're using FreeTrack, um, don't change anything here. Just keep it on phone sensors. Uh, hotkey, that's not extremely important. Just take note of that if you need to recenter your view for some reason. And let's see, tracking prediction. Okay, so some people might want to change this. It pretty much tells you what it is here. It says tracking prediction option tries to estimate the future head position. The value determines how long into the future it'll try to predict it. When the prediction is wrong, it'll jump to the correct position, causing a jitter effect. The higher the value, the higher the chance for errors and more jitter. So, okay, so if you want less latency, drag it all the way up. <laughs> but then uh, your image will not be very smooth. It'll be very jittery as it says So if you want the smoothest image as possible, but don't care about Latency then turn it down to slower response or less jitter. But I found that 60 the default is very good Steam VR options. You shouldn't need to mess with this uh, Safe mode all that does is make sure that Riftcat launches every time you launch Steam VR So I, I'll check that actually. That's a good thing to leave on Steam VR fake sensor. What this does is that it emulates a tracking sensor if the game requires it. 
So unless your game specifically says that it needs a tracking sensor or some special tracking thing to run and it won't run without it, uh, then you won't need to check this. IPD. Okay, so this is the distance between the eyes. So different people's eyes will be closer or farther apart. So the image might appear blurry. So if the image is blurry or not centered right for some people, you might want to change the IPD. Now this changes this on a software level, but if you're using a actual VR headset thing, I just had to grab mine here, uh, most of them will have a hardware version of this, so most of you won't need to change this option in the program. So unless your eyes are unusually far apart or close together for some reason, uh, this setting here on your headset will probably be fine. Alright, scale. Ah, uh, okay, so sets the image zoom strength. Again, you, you probably won't need to worry about this. This will make the image larger or smaller, essentially, is all it's saying. And I guess if it depends on some VR headsets or some, you know, phone headsets might have kind of weird lenses that don't work right with your device that you're using. And then you might need to change the image so that uh, the image, I guess, covers your whole field of view or that you see everything or see less of everything. So that is it for this video. I went through pretty much everything in this program uh, that I know of, and I hope you found it useful. There's not too many videos like this on YouTube, so I, I figured I'd put up my own. And uh, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.